Hold on, cut the music. <laughs> Let me get this straight. So, you want to know how to abuse glitches and jank to gain an advantage over your opponent in this children's party game? Me! Sounds good to me. Let's look at a few of the ones I haven't already covered. This is Roy's up B, and unlike his clones, it's a pretty poor move to gimp or end a combo with, unfortunately. Given the right characters on the right tournament legal stages, however, Roy's blazer is extremely deadly. Like, kill you at 0% deadly. While Dolphin Slash is a strong single hit attack, Blazer is a multi-hit move, and the developers tried their hardest to make sure that if you get caught by the move at any point, you'd continue to get hit by its successive hitboxes. To achieve this, Blazer's initial hitboxes were given set knockback, the idea being that no matter what percent Roy's opponent was, Blazer would always work in its full, multi-hit glory. But they fucked up. Big time. The first of Blazer's many hitboxes sends upward at an 84 degree angle with a set knockback value of 200. 200. And by reversing Roy's up B, you're able to hit with only that insanely strong hitbox. To put that into perspective, Yoshi's down tilt, a crazy strong move in its own right, has only 100 set knockback, and with no DI, sends Jigglypuff halfway across Final Destination. Now, you might ask, why'd they make this first hit so powerful? And through some testing, it becomes apparent that without crazy high set knockback, smaller opponents tend to just fall out of Roy's up B after the first hit, instead of being comboed by it. So to remedy this, the developers made the first hit send you further up, so they didn't have to worry about certain characters being too short for the rest of its hits to connect. The downsides? Well, you have to play as Roy for one. And in addition, Blazer is easily punished if you whiff and pretty hard to actually hit a good player with. In any case, it's definitely better than trying to noodle your opponent to death. The Invisible Ceiling Glitch, or ICG, is a weird one, but given a knowledgeable player or just some luck, is also exploitable. I've got an entire video explaining it in detail, but here's the gist of ICG. If you leave the ground before you're done sliding after using a grounded move on someone's shield or counter, you'll be affected by the invisible ceiling glitch, a bug that seemingly causes you to collide with the eponymous invisible ceiling when experiencing knockback. Interestingly, hitting a shield or counter from the left subjects you to a permanent invisible ceiling glitch until you touch the ground again, but from the right it only affects you for a small number of frames. Here's the fun, exploitable part. Choose Marth, Roy, or Peach and activate ICG by countering a grounded opponent to the left of you, making sure your counter sends them off stage. Then, before they can end the ICG's influence by landing back on stage, simply hit them with any move, ideally one with a lot of hits done, and observe how instead of being knocked away at the move's normal knockback angle, your opponent is sent at a brutal downward angle with the same amount of hits done the move would normally have. When done with Marth and Roy, this is called the Swordsman Spike, in spite of Marth already having a spike, and with Peach, the Princess Spike. And you can even do it as Kirby if he inhales Peach. Wait, this isn't legal anymore. In the very first of my commentated videos, I showed off Ness's yo-yo glitch, a glitch that, under certain conditions, leaves a permanent, lingering hitbox on stage. Okay. More specifically, I showed off a certain use for the glitch called the deadline, which stretches the hitbox of one of Ness's attacks from where Ness initiated the glitch all the way to his current location. But would you believe there's even more to this already crazy-ass glitch? They call it the jacket. Oh, he's, he's going for it. Oh! Yes. As the name implies, jackets are specific moves hitboxes that are worn by Ness, which stay attached to him until he either dies or the hitbox comes into contact with his opponent. Oh. Moves that can be worn by Ness include his down air, up air, 
down smash, throws, and most famously, PK Thunder. The jacket of which is known by the community as the Thunder Jacket. To activate the Thunder Jacket, set up the yo-yo glitch as usual by slightly charging Ness's up smash and hitting an opponent before releasing it. Now, instead of attacking with Ness to perform the deadline, use Ness's up B to either grab the ledge or shoot into the ground. If you did it right, the hitbox that Ness normally has when recovering with PK Thunder will be attached to him permanently until he hits someone with it. My personal favorite jacket, however, is the Spike Jacket. It's the same idea as the Thunder Jacket, but instead of up being into the ground or the ledge, you land right as Down Air's hitbox comes out. This attaches Ness's Down Air hitbox to him and allows for goofy looking plays like this.